Back down to Campbelltown! Hello and welcome to another Whiskey Review. With me, the Whiskey Novice, thank you for joining me once again. This is review number 97, part 5, and the final part of my series, Back Down to Campbelltown. A series I've enjoyed an awful lot simply because it's Campbelltown. And I do like my Campbelltown whiskies, be they Glen Scotia, be they Kilcarran, be they Springbank, something, anything. I will take it gladly. I'll enjoy it. I'll let you know what I think of it. So this time we're back to Glen Scotia. Back over there, these guys, I mentioned before, owned by the Loch Lomond Group. This time, the non-age statement, Victoriana. Now, there's a bit of a story behind this, behind the, the, the maturation, it's a bit of a weird thing. It's aged in ex-bourbon casks before being split. Aged for a non-declared period of time before being split. 30% PX casks. 70% heavily charred American oak casks. Then again, for a, a period of time undisclosed, before being married and rested, uh, and then for, for a period of time, and then basically bottled. I, I suppose the best way you could explain it is au naturel, because it is cast strength, non chill filter, no color added. It's, it's quite the thing of beauty. And it, it tastes it too. You know, I'm giving the game away a wee bit there, but it is, it is. It's bottled, bottled at 50, this version bottled at 54.2%. There'll be older ones which are bought. You know, it's another one of these ones which has varied a little over time. So be careful again, if you're picking one up, if you were picking one up based on this review, be careful that you're picking up the same one, bottled at 54.2%. So generally, whenever you're picking one up, then you're looking at the same thing. Uh, oh yeah, as I said, no chill filtration here, no colour added, just very, very natural. I do know, it is a non-age statement, but I do know having spoken to the distillery, or in particular to the master blender from uh, Loch Lomond, who covers this as well, Michael Henry, that it's not, you know, it's not age statement, it's not young. They, I know what they mean when they, I mean, sometimes people will ask, especially in a modern age, whenever distilleries are putting out whiskies, which are young and they're, they're quite merely declaring what age it is, be it a young age, why then whiskies like this still come out, still not age statement whiskies come about? Well, there's a there's a variation of age in this, and if you, as soon as you declare that age on the bottle, you're pretty much nailing yourself into a very specific price range, into a, a, your pigeonhole in a price range almost. This comes in around for me anyway for here in the UK around the sixty five to seventy five pounds mark, which yes. Is, is quite high for a non-age statement. But remember, it's all very natural. And I know for a fact that the whiskey in here ain't that young. There's no young whiskies in here, not young, young anyway. So uh, I'll, not, I'll not take that any further than that. I don't want to get myself into trouble or anybody else. Let's just get into the nose, shall we? Now I did say about that 30% PX cask and for me for me the immediate thought is of PX cask weirdly it's only you know there's a 30% thing there of that PX cask 70% heavily charred but just my initial thought was that PX cask and I don't even think it's it's power of suggestion it's it, you can definitely for me anyway knows that sherry influence Just, it's everything's dark, dried fruit, sherry cask. But, you know, that does settle out. That does settle out. And the char of that, you know, the char's there as well. Char and oak. It's, it's a, it's a well-balanced one. Remember, 54.2%. There is a bit of a kick there but those dark notes 
works so well with it that it tends to blend it in. Not that you can take this easy. Don't you know? I wouldn't certainly wouldn't consider this a beginner's whiskey by any means. There's a deep, deep sweetness. Something it's sweet, but it's really deep and rich. It's like toasted almonds or or even a slightly burnt meringue as in a, a meringue that has just went too far. It's to me sounding like as if I know what I'm talking about, but <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm sure most of us have, 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 have come across that. It's not even creme, well, I suppose to a certain extent there's creme brulee in there, but if a meringue uh, in the way that they toast them with the, with the, um, with the small uh, flame, you know the one I mean. I certainly don't. And uh, and if it just if it just goes too far, or even even here's one from American friends, s'mores that uh, marshmallow where it's just burnt, it's caught, and then that gets blown out. And yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. And it's it's that real rich sugary sweetness, but there's a darkness of it as well, which blends. It comes from that char. So yeah, that's what it is. There is a fruitiness, if, if there is a fruitiness and there is, aside from those dried fruits, it's like a blood orange, something yet again sweet, but darker, not, not fresh, fruity, sharp, sweet, something quite subtle. Yeah. And even a, a hint of grapefruit. Yes. There's a tanginess, tartness of grapefruit. Yep. And I'm going to still, still borrow something that my good friend, Whiskey Straight Al, I, I reviewed this recently and uh, and I and I remember him saying about a jamminess and there is. That I, I, I definitely know what he means. It's like a, it's a jammy note or a conserve rather than a, rather than a fruit, fresh fruit. But very, very nice, very nice. Very nice indeed. End of the palette. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Dark, that jamminess again. Sweet and sour delivery. Really, really rich. So I have cola cubes, which are a confectionery here. I'm getting a deep, dark port. It's a nice, rich sweetness like a port, but it works very well along with everything else, so it doesn't stand out. It's not something that's that's jumping out of the glass. Coats incredibly well, covers incredibly well. Barley sugar, another confectionery. Mince pies, as in sweet mince pies. I, yet again, I believe uh, Whiskey Straight Al might have mentioned that in his, and he's right. Just rich for a cake, plum. All these dark, sweet and sour notes just all the time. A nice chilli, peppery heat carrying long into the finish. That finish is long. Is that chilli, peppery heat actually? Maybe closer to a gingery heat, which, which I suppose would tend to would tend to lean then and play on. Uh, that Glen Scotia spirit that I, I said before about getting a gingery thing off, I tend to get a gingery thing off Loch Lomond. So there's maybe something in that. Yeah. Mm. Loads of that dried fruit carries throughout, right through the finish. Lovely. Lovely stuff. 
I mean, this is what I, I, I said earlier in this series whenever I was talking about the Glen Scotia double cask. That I think, could be wrong, but I think that Glen Scotia are riding a wave or certainly being urged along by or helped along by the fact that the Springbank and Glen Gyle have become so popular. But it's their standalone spirit, it's their standalone whiskey. Glen Scotia may have been a little quieter. Certainly, whenever I was looking around a, a couple of years back, Glen Scotia didn't seem to be talked about an awful lot. That's not me having a, that's no slight at them. It's just, it just seemed to be the way when you go through social media, etc. Glen Scotia aren't usually on the on there as often i see it now starting to appear more and more and more and it deserves it it earns it it's great stuff water yes you can actually be fairly generous with that water what does it bring out licorice salted caramel and toffee oh lovely it, it, it really is. It's just, it, it makes those dark notes more caramely and sweet. That licorice is there. It's a hint it's in the background. I said before, I'm not a massive fan of licorice, but when it, when it works with everything else, it works. That salted caramel and toffee. Yeah, very much so. And the salted caramel, you know, is there a hint of brininess? Is there, a, I'm not sure. I think it's just salted caramel. So don't we get into this with fear of smoke or peat or anything like that there. This is just, to me, a well-balanced, not a sherry bomb. It's not a sherry bomb. It's just well-balanced. Sherry's there, but it's balanced out. That water takes the edge off the palate, makes it far, far more anxious. Rounds off all those edges. All the dark fruit's still there. Sweetens it up slightly. Making that fruit even better. Yeah. Finish still long, lovely, rich. Sweet. Actually, the finish is probably even better because it's it's rounded the finish off as well. It's rounded that gingery heat off. The heat's still there. The gingeriness is still there, but it's just made it more of a, a flavour rather than a sensation. If, if you haven't tried Glen Scotia Victoriana, I recommend you do. I could understand it's quite pricey for an unaged statement. Because it is quite pricey for an unaged statement. But, but, it's cast strength. There's no colour added. It's non chill filtered. It just, you know, I think sometimes we just have to put ourselves into the trust and the faith and the hands of the distillery and say, yeah, I like your stuff. I don't care if it has an age statement or not. I'm just going to give it a go and I'll probably enjoy it. And in this case, it's a prime example of if the distillery is good, you trust the distillery, their whiskey's probably going to be all right, isn't it? You know, there'll be good ones and bad ones from that distillery. I don't think they're all capable of being right all the time but when they're I think you know if you can trust the distillery enough and this is where it can, the whole Campbelltown thing wraps up for me this is a prime example of a whiskey which wraps up Campbelltown for me so far so far now they've all been good they've all been good there's been better there's been worse but if I hold them against just whiskies from other areas of Scotland, from other areas of the world, etc. They're 
good. They're, they're great in most cases. You know, they, they, they hold themselves up well. I haven't had a bad one from Camel Town. Some better than worse. Some are, sorry, some better than others. But I still haven't had a bad one. So uh, that and this Victoriana, I think, sums up Glen Scotia. Or sums up Campbell Town quite well for me. So with that in mind, yes. Yes all day long to Glen Scotia Victoriana. If you haven't had it, definitely give it a go. Let's leave that and move on. Yeah, with that in mind, I now, when I did my tasting notes for this Victoriana, it made me think of a whiskey. And this is the whiskey it made me think of, Glenlivet Nadura. This is the Oloroso matured, bottled at 60.2%. Montel filtered. Uh, given the choice of these two bottlings, now this this is a, a better price. I think you you pick pick this up for around the fifty to sixty pounds mark. A lot of the time, this Victoriana, as I said, sixty both non age statement, uh, sixty five to seventy five. Of the two of them, the Victoriana all day long yeah the, all day long over the nadura but the nadura for me still a good whiskey what lets this one down a wee bit and i'll be reviewing it soon is the finish uh, it just it tends to tail off very quick this one whereas this drags out long long into a finish and even now while he's talking about it i'm starting to get hits of black current hints of candy floss so there's there's lots and lots goes on in this this just tails off a little quick, but if you've had this and enjoyed it, I would recommend the Oloroso Mature Glen Levitt. Or, or her, because I don't always, I, I didn't, it was only when I was doing my tasting notes that it made me think of this, but I remember having this prior to it, and it made me think of the Edredor 12 year old Caledonia, which I don't have a bottle of currently, but so, so there you go you know it's it's not there's enough going on in this or plenty going on in this whiskey to offer up other suggestions to you so there you have it you get two suggestions this episode either the Glen Levitt Nadora or the Edredor 12 year old Caledonia which the Edredor 12 year old Caledonia would come in closer to this sort of price range but still a very very good whiskey very worth picking up so that's pretty much it that's that's pretty much it for this series for this bottle. Mm. 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 Oh yeah, uh, a series I've enjoyed very much because I do like my Campbelltown whiskey. I think I've got that point across by now. <laughs> so I'll be back next time, with something different. Until then, thank you very very much for joining me. Thank you very much for enjoying this series or joining me for this series. Thank you for the comments. Always very much appreciate it. Thank you very much to my uh, patrons. If you wish to join that group, the details are in the description below. Till the next time when I'll be back with something different. Look after yourselves. Here's to your good health. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please click and subscribe to be notified of further content.